Oh, a bit of both, really. Sort of lo- loose diva, really. <laughs> <laughs> you were born singing, weren't you? I was, actually. I can't remember when I didn't do it. People do often say to me, when did you decide to become a singer? And I don't think I ever did decide to be one. I just always was one. It was just what I was born to be. What's great about you, in the past I've seen you with a big orchestra, but now it's just you, your voice and a piano. Well, I really wanted to challenge myself with that. It's, it's, Le- it's Leslie Garrett unplugged, basically. Because <laughs> I have, for, you know, for, for many years, I've, I've toured with big orchestras and love doing that, and we'll do that again. But just for this particular tour, which is a very special tour for me, because it's, it's my 30th anniversary this year of, of being a professional singer, and I'm, I'm actually so kind of grateful, really, to the public for uh, allowing me to, to, to do this job that I absolutely adore for all these years. I, I just very much, much wanted to sort of strip myself bare, as it were, not literally, don't, don't panic, everybody, uh, but you know, just be there by myself, um, just me and my voice, and, and I've, I'm, I've brought a lovely friend of mine, a, a colleague from Covent Garden, uh, Nick Folwell, who's coming around with me so I can do some duets, because I do love to, to present scenes from operas, where, you know, and, mm. and, and, uh, and shows when I'm, when I'm able to. Um, so it's just me and, and Andrew West, my pianist, a very gorgeous piano, and my mate Nick, and, and I'm just going to be singing for a couple of hours music that I absolutely adore. But, you know, I've taken a lot of care of my voice over these years. It might surprise you, Alex, to know that I start singing lessons every single week. Really? Uh, and I'm in training all the time. It's the only way you, you, know, you can do it, really, because I, I'm, I'm absolutely determined not to uh, disappoint, ever disappoint my fans and not, and not to allow my voice to deteriorate ever. Um, and so and I, I'm convinced that the way to do that and the proof of the pudding is in the eating is to continue to train and to maintain and develop my, my instrument, my, my sound, my body, which is, you know, because the thing about being a singer is you are your instrument. And, and I will continue to do that so I can present more challenging programmes always to, to the public. Um, and that's what I'm doing with, with, the, with the tour that I'm on at the moment. And you see, I love that about you. It's a sign of such a true star and a natural talent that you're not hiding behind anything. Because I think these big production shows that you see with all the stars now, it's very easy to cover up anything when you've got 15,000 dancers, a big set, a big screen and 40 million people in a band. Absolutely, and when you've got a sound system, you can you can actually well, you can hide a lot behind a sound system. Uh, and of course, I do use uh, sound systems if I'm singing outdoors, if I'm singing in a massive venue when I've got a 60-piece orchestra on my on the stage with me, and I'm I'm singing 20 numbers. You need a little bit of help there. But I just want to show my, the public, really, um, show my fans and my friends that uh, you know, after 30 years, I am better than I've ever been. I just want to stand there just myself, um, all, almost as it were naked, and just show the, 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 you know, the fan, my fans and friends that, that, uh, you know, that my voice is as good, if not better, than it's ever been. And I just want to... You know, you, you can achieve an enormous intimacy that way when you've nothing to hide behind. You can really, really mm. share your, your innermost feelings about this music and about the people that you're singing to. The level of communication in such a situation, I think, is... Is, is remarkable because there's nothing getting in between you and, and your audience. And I love that. That's what gives me the biggest high ever to feel that I'm truly reaching people's hearts. You're the diva from Doncaster who everybody loves. And I want you to take this in the spirit it's intended. Do you think people love you so much because of your voice or your personality? Because I think the two are so important with you. There's a million classical singers who we can't be bothered to listen to. But you're so warm on stage. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I thought it was a frock's love, actually. <laughs> Certain percentage <laughs> well, of the audience, maybe. But <laughs> no, I tell you, I think what, it's very sweet of you to say that, and I really appreciate that. And and I think the two go hand in hand because you know if you don't have a kind of well an empathy and a warmth um, for for your audience and for the music that you love, then you're not going to get anywhere, are you? Really, I think. I think you have to be, a, a, hopefully, a, a you know, generous-spirited, warm human being to be able to appreciate the music in the first place. And then you need to want to share that with, 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 uh, with the public. Um, and and I, think, I think that's, for me, that's just a natural instinct to want to, to communicate. I, I've, I've, it's an interesting, over the years, I've, I've observed this. That it's almost as if you need two talents to be a successful singer you need to have you need to have the obvious ability you need to have the the, the raw talent um you know you have to you have to have a voice and and to have a technique to be able to project that voice but then separately 
And in addition, you have to have this powerful need to communicate how you feel about music to to your audience, to to want to communicate um, passion, I think. Mm. That's the bottom line. I've always felt incredibly passionate about music and and about the the, the the emotions that it allows me to experience and allows me to uh, create in, in other people. Um, Don't you think as well in live theatre they'll suss you if you're a fraud and oh, doing it yes. just for the money? Absolutely. You must never patronise your audience. And I think audiences are the most discerning people. I mean, it goes into your music. You, you, what you need to, what you have to do is, is take these knocks and uh, and these experiences and mm. and allow it to inform your music. And if you can do that, you then you'll grow and you'll be a, a better and better performer. Don't you think from re- being around here as well makes you humble in a sense that if you went back to the clubs now, being the star you are, you'd still have to be off for half nine for the bingo. Absolutely, and so you should. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. Get your priorities right. Who, whether it's Mozart or Rogers and Hammerstein, whether it's Andrew Lloyd Webber or Purcell, all of whom are going to be featured in my concert, you know, it, you have just got to, in a sense, feel the same about all those composers because it's just good music that will hopefully really ignite your imagination and inflame your passion because that's my job. <laughs> and I just, I, I love all these different composers and, my, and, and I have to find what that composer wants, wants me to do with his or her music it's my job to discover that and bring that to you and that's what that's what i find fascinating about singing and always will uh, even after 30 years i you know to, to find a new song and think now what what am i have i got to convey with this what was this composer hmm. thinking about when he or she read this piece of poetry and decided to make a song out of it and, and it's it's just fascinating, it's that, and I just, I just love it. And the great thing about you is you sing all these foreign songs that we don't necessarily understand, but then you explain them afterwards. Well, I do, because I, I love singing in original languages. I love singing in English, and the majority of my concert is in English, but some of the operatic arias are in, and the duets are in Italian, and I always explain what I'm singing about and give the context of each of each piece. Uh, but I also just like to chat, and I'll tell a few funny stories, and I'll ask, you know, how people are, and, you know, just generally make it a wonderful night's entertainment. So, you know, people who come shouldn't think it mustn't think well anybody who knows me will know it won't be like this but it's not a fantastically formal thing <laughs> uh, a Leslie Garrett concert it's you know it's a bit like you were in your front room at home having a bit of a sing song you know and and um, and your auntie who has a bit of a cracking voice is there giving it a bit of welly you my know, auntie sounds nothing like you Leslie <laughs> let me t- <laughs> how smart are you technically with the songs you sing <laughs> Well, I did have a wonderful training. I was six years at the Royal Academy of Music, and, um, a seventh year then at the National Opera Studio, and I was a good for 12 years as a classical opera singer, straightforward opera singer, mostly at English National Opera, but at all the other companies in Britain and all over the world, before I, if you like, went into being a classical entertainer. Uh, and a lot of, um, of, of singers, of sort of classical crossover, if you like, I hate that word myself, sounds like a bra, but a, a lot of the... <laughs> <laughs> crossover singers now uh, really haven't had that kind of background and and only sing amplified with microphones and that's fantastic and I'm really not knocking them they're great performers but I think I just wanted to show you know the public that I, I can actually do it without I can fill a 2000 seater hall just with my natural sound because uh, I am quite I suppose proud of the fact that I've I've maintained my training and I've you know and I've, I've absolutely kept my technique uh, as, as, as it ever was and better still hopefully Hopefully, uh, and I just, I just give me a bit of a, you know, a bit of satisfaction to be able to fill a big hall like that, um, just just by myself. And so that's what I'm going to do. And is loose women good for putting bums on seats? Oh, loose women is just, loose. Like, listen, shall I tell you? Just you me. Loose women is my social life. <laughs> I go there for. For the fun, uh, and and absolutely, it puts bombs on seats. I mean, you know, I've got to be honest. Uh, I, now, when I walk down the street, it's uh, it's as much. Oh, it's the, oh, it's our Leslie. It's that singer. It's, it's as much that is. Oh, our Leslie, the loose woman. So yeah. you know, it, it's become part of my of who I am, my personality, and I'm very very grateful that it is because it's a it's a fabulous show, and it deals with real issues, real subjects, real people, real women and men. We've got some brave men who you know tune in. I know, and <laughs> and, and I. You know, I, I feel privileged to be with those extraordinary women. And if you want to have a natter at the end of the show, come round to the stage door and I'll be there having a bit of a crack. <laughs> Save that voice. You've got a show to do. <laughs> Leslie Garrett, lovely to talk to you. Thanks, Thanks for coming Alex. on. Thank you, Alex. Alex Belfield.